school of thought, and I hear this across all professional team sports, that your best players have to be your best players if you're going to win a championship. Oh, well, I would posit that the best players on this particular team also need to be their best players. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dayon Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins in the same place that you found this. We are two weeks away from the season opener in Miami, and Brian Reynolds has an amazing stat line through spring training. He said 27 plate appearances, three hits, all three of them for home runs to go with three strikeouts. No idea what to make of that, except for this. Doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot. A year ago in the spring, he ended up batting 190, and you might remember that he came out looking like Ted Williams for the first two, three weeks of the season and got himself paid. And he got himself paid in a way that would suggest he's the franchise's best player. I've called him that for a while now. I don't know how much conviction I put behind that because I loved what I saw of Kibrian Hayes in the final couple months of 2023. And I love the fact that his defending, his elite defending, his better than anybody at any position defending is so reliable, is so steady. It's not like hitting. When you're good out in the field, you're good out in the field, period. To have that coupled with the offense that he showed, it makes me think that he could become the best player on this team. But for now, I'm sticking with Reynolds. I guess the discussion then becomes what is he in the long term? Is there any kind of uh, untapped reserve still in there? Or is he just going to continue to be the same player that he was in the 2023 season, which I don't say in any sort of derogatory way. He batted 263, 24 home runs, 84 RBIs, 790 OPS. A little bit down from the year before, but never appreciably so with him. He is now what he was last year, what he was the year before that. Really, if you think about it, what he was as a rookie when he came up. This is just who he is. He's born to hit, and he hits at a certain level, in a certain way, to all parts of the field, with some pop, some patience, and consistent production, which is very much valued in baseball, probably more than any other trait. That's why you pay him. That's why you feel good about paying him. Now, did it feel a little bit awkward that he had the best Two weeks ever right before he got paid? Yeah, sure, kind of. But there's something that's just so calming when it comes to team building to have that guy that you can look at over there and say, you know exactly what you're going to end up with out of him. Now, in Bradenton a couple weeks ago, I asked Reynolds if there was anything new he was working on, if there was any, and he gives me this smile where he's answering my question before I even finish it. And I go, okay, no, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm here to play ball. I'm excited. You know, when that voice that he uses that makes you think that he's not excited, but he actually is, I'm excited. (laughs) But that's what he does in those conversations, and then he immediately changes his subject to the rest of the team. He'll start pointing around to other guys that he's excited about, and he fits like that. There was, oh, this is this is a heck of a thing to bring up, but there was some thought at the time that he signed his extension as to, you know, and, and he heard some of it too. Dude, what are you doing? What are you signing with the Pirates for? You know, go to a good team. Win something. You know, get yourself on a contender. Have a chance. And he was like, he likes it here. He's 
he's cool with what's here. He knows and loves a lot of the people that are in the atmosphere. And that was just a choice that he made. Same choice Hayes made. Same choice Mitch Keller just made. And I'm not going to begrudge him that. Talk about loyalty. You can't bash it in both directions, right? But that's also part of his personality. For those of you who've been listening to this program for a while, you'll know that anytime I call out the clubhouse or the leadership, I'll never mention Reynolds' name. I'll never mention Hayes' name. These are guys who I believe in a in a championship environment, which obviously doesn't exist in Pittsburgh yet, if it ever will. These are classic supplementary or complementary pieces. If you want a good parallel for that, if you think back to the 2013 to 15 teams that the Pirates had that make the playoffs, you can very easily trace Neil Walker coming up and Neil Walker being seen as a potential star and he was going to be this and that first round pick and everything else. And he had himself a fine major league career, but he'd be the first to tell you he didn't elevate himself into stardom. He became that type of piece. Of course, he also was very much a leader. It doesn't fit everyone's persona, but what does fit is the production. And the one thing that I will say about Reynolds' production in 2023 was that it felt to me like there were a few too many lulls and they were long lulls that didn't need to be that. And the Pirates couldn't afford to have them be that because he's still important at an outsized level for this roster. He has to be their best player is what I'm saying. He's going to bat number two, which is where all the analytics tell you to put your best hitter. He's got to be that guy. And if there's another gear, if there's a a way to rekindle that magic from the first two weeks of last season, that would be fine, too. When we come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800 degree stone and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun. It's a great meal and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Today's J1Q comes from Paul, who asks, DK, could it be that players get better when they leave the Pirates because of the losing, because of the intrinsic human need for purpose? The purpose of a competitive athlete is to win. Too many coaches, too many years, too many players to pin it all on just development, in my opinion. Yes, an enthusiastic, skywritten yes for me, Paul. I... I have not just seen players leave Pittsburgh and find another level when they go to a winning team. I've heard it from them. I've heard them come back to me and say, whoa, this is something else entirely. What am I doing here? Some of them have cited it in a negative way because their teammates are going to be a lot more demanding of them. Their coaches are going to be a lot more demanding of them. Heck, the, the paying public might be that way, depending on where you are. But there have been players here who were in very, very, very comfortable circumstances, which is kind of why I brought up the Brian Reynolds thing in the first segment. Because there are people in the sport who will look at you kind of askew when you sign with the Pirates. You're thinking, really? Oh, so you have no interest in winning then, right? Which isn't fair, but it's out there, okay? So the best way to foster that, and I'm looking through your question here because of what you said. It kind of rung a bell here with me. You say too many coaches, too many years, too many players to pin it all on development. This is why when they were 20 and 8 last season to open up, I 
maybe in a vacuum, was going ballistic over the fact that management wouldn't take it seriously. Clearly wouldn't take it seriously. O'Neill Cruz went down to a season-ending injury, and they didn't lift a pinky finger to replace him. Do you know what the math is on starting out 20-8 and eight or better and missing out on the playoffs? Never mind falling off the way they did entirely. That's just an acceptance of losing. That's an acceptance of we are who we are. And that, that infects this organization at every level. And unfortunately, and I thought it might, but it didn't change from the last front office to this one. Heck, at least that front office had themselves a run. A lot of that was due to the players and Neil Walker and Travis Snyder and A.J. Burnett and Russell Martin and others pressuring management. But that also has to happen, too. That has to happen with this group, ultimately, which is why I keep waiting for that next big voice in the clubhouse. Some people predict that it'll be Henry Davis. It'll be Paul Skeens, both of whom shown great leadership skills in college. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. But it has to happen here. You have to take more seriously than anything. At some point, games being played right in front of you. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. We'll be back Monday with another one. 